I learned about the existence of a mystery Rambi series only recently because I'm teaching a class about mystery fiction, detective fiction, and I was looking for games that had to do with that kind of topic, maybe something from Edgar Allan Poe or theme that's themed after Edgar Allan Poe stories because in my class we read Poe stories and that's how I learned about Mystery Rummy Murders in the Room Morgue and other Mystery Rummy games. I was curious about the system, I wanted to play one or more of these games and look at the incredible coincidence this game shows up in my mail, Mystery Rummy Escape from Alcatraz and I hadn't ordered it or I hadn't contacted the publisher or anything, they just sent me a copy, I assume it is a review copy, uh, so I played it, I found that to be an extraordinary coincidence with, to, to find in my mail a box, uh, uh, a game, a box with a game that I, there is an assistant I wanted to try, so I give it a try. The idea is that, like I seem to understand, it is for other games in the Mr. Rummy series, you have the basic engine or the basic core concepts of Rummy, um, which is a very popular game, internationally known. For my Italian viewers, that is Scala, but for everybody else, it's Rummy. So you have the core engine of Rummy tailored with a mystery related theme with some extra rules and some adjustments so that indeed you can have an interconnection between Rummy and mystery. Which is, I, I don't know, I sometimes wonder how do people come up with that idea like, oh, tomorrow I'm gonna have poker and dragons, or I'm gonna make scopa and mining in space. Anyhow, Mr. Rummy has been done, and there's the new chapter, Escape from Alcatraz. Let me show you how the game works. In this game you use two decks of cards, an action deck, and we'll talk about that later, and a main draw deck. At the beginning of the game you start drawing cards from the draw deck and you put them in a line by the deck forming the discard pile. The discard pile needs to be such that you can see all of the cards that are available in it. And the discard pile mainly contains plans, plan cards, plans that the um, inmates of Alcatraz are concocting to try to get out, such as attacking the guards in the Battle of Alcatraz, uh, sneaking out in disguise, etc. etc. At the beginning of the game, you draw cards and you add them to the discard pile until you find a card of this type, which is an escapee, a criminal, an inmate of Alcatraz that is trying to get out. There are two types of such inmates some are color coded, such as this one, which is blue, and some or generic. Once you find an inmate then you place it in a separate area which forms the yard. Let's say that here is the yard. And if you uh, turn over 20 cards and you put 20 cards in this card pile and you haven't found an inmate then you search the deck for one such inmate to place in the yard. Then each player receives a hand of 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and the game is ready to start. Now, and this game, at the beginning of your turn you draw either two cards from the deck or a card from the uh, discard pile and it has to be the card that is on top unless there is a special action that allows you to break that rule. So you draw two cards or one card and that or those to your hand and then you can play cards. If you have sets uh, of cards uh, of the same color and you have three or more of a color then you can start a meld. You can put down these cards uh, as your starting group, as your starting set. However, the number of colors in play may not be higher than the number of inmates in the yard. The color doesn't have to match, but right now we have a color that is out, a call or a, a inmate in the yard. If another player had a set of cards of another color, say red or green, the player would not be able to play them. The player would need to first play an inmate. Uh, but this is one of the generic inmates I was referring to, they're not color coded. Now if there are two inmates in the yard, then extra, uh, then an extra color can be added and you can have two colors out. 
Once a caller is on the table, that is an escape plan has started, the, the players that are supposed to be investigating the possible escape plans are collecting clues and these cards that form sets are supposed to be the clues that are collecting. When a plan has been started, the players can play cards of that color in their play area. So for example, my opponent would be able to play brown cards right now. So when it is your turn, you can start a meld as long as the number of colors in play is not higher than the number of inmates. You can play cards in your play area of colors that have already been started. So you may add uh, two sets in your area. You may start your own set as long as it is a color that is already out and you're not breaking the usual rule. You can also play one inmate from your hand and play it in, in the yard. To increase the number of possible uh, of possible colors that are out. When you're starting a new set or adding to a set, you draw an action card from this deck and you resolve the effects. Effects may be that you can either draw two cards from the cell block or take any one card from solitary. Solitary would be another name for the discard pile. You play this card on escape plan. The escape plan can now be foiled with five plan cards instead of eight. Oh, big spoiler here. Because, well, now we're here. We don't need to read more effects, but this is the idea. You start a new plan, you add to a plan, then you get a card to resolve the effects. What happens if there are eight cards in play of a certain color? And that includes all of the areas. So if I have three and my opponent has five, then there are eight cards of a certain color in play. So the eight cards can belong to different players as long as the total is eight and it is your turn, then you can foil the plan. Then you declare that you're taking the, that action and you simply need to uh, score the cards that are in your area as long as you can attach a criminal to them. So you have the clues but you also need to figure out who did it and you can attach to that plan a generic criminal or a criminal of a matching color if you have one. If you're foiling the um, brown plan and I've, I've triggered that action then I can add uh, a generic uh, criminal or I could add the brown criminal and then I take these cards and I score them and I put them under my foiled card which simply indicates the position of my score pile. The other players also get to foil that is to score the cards of the color that is being triggered under the foil card and if they have in their hand a criminal, which is either a generic criminal or a criminal of the correct color, they can also throw that in and score that card too. And at the end of your turn, when you're done performing your action, you need to discard a card to the discard pile. Game continues like this with players drawing, performing actions such as playing inmates, starting plans, adding to plans, and triggering. Um, triggering the foiling action. They continue like this until either the draw deck is exhausted or a player has got rid of all of his cards, so a player has no cards in hand. Whichever occurs first, that triggers the end of the game. If you do manage to have no cards in your hand, you also get a bonus, which is you get to score bonus points for each inmate, which is in the yard at that point. But either way, whether you get the bonus or not, at the end of a round, the players score the points that come from the cards that are under their foiled card. And the points value is the number printed in the top right and bottom left corner of each plan card and each criminal card. If you have a total of 100 point at that points at that point, you win the game, otherwise you play another round and the first player to reach 100 victory points is the winner of the game. So players in this game are trying to foil the escape plans of the Alcatraz inmates and to catch them before they escape and then I guess they gain glory, prestige uh, through the points that they collect. But that's really not it. This is the first time that I play a mystery rummy game and I have to say I really did not see the theme through the mechanics at all. 
I talk to people and actually they tell me that there are other games that are more thematic but in this uh, game here you have a rummy variant with art that has to do with Alcatraz and with prison life with very interesting factoids printed in the cards. I learned a lot from, from those cards. I hope they're historically accurate which I assume they are. So a lot about Alcatraz. Um, I didn't have any sort of thematic connection, the this, this feeling that I was exploring the theme or that anything that I was doing was even slightly related to what the theme entails. I was matching colors, I was counting cards, I was making sure the certain sets of cards would be profitable to me and I was manipulating effects so that the opponents would get a certain number of cards uh, in their player instead of another. That was it. It is still, in my opinion, a very abstract game, which feels pretty much like a small uh, variant of Rami. By small, I mean it doesn't feel like the, the variations over the basic ideas are the same. Uh, as opposed to uh, other games of this type in the Rami family, here it is not that easy to get rid of all of your cards, it is not the only possible objective, and probably the biggest difference here is that you have two decks and you have the decks of action cards, um, which does add variety to the game, even though the number of effects is not huge, there are some effects that are present a lot of times in the deck, and in a certain sense it just adds another level of randomness, uh, variety and predictability, but not really anything that uh, brings much to the table in terms of the decisions that you can you can take. It just means some cards are moved from the draw deck to the discard pile or yeah, yeah you can get a card from uh, from anywhere in the in the discard pile. That is great. That is the one decision connected to the actions that gives you a little more flexibility, a little more thinking to do. But other than that, um, it, is just, it just feels like more randomness, more events that you implement, you make them happy they entertain you, but they don't really uh, change much in, in, in gameplay to me. They really didn't seem to add much to the experience. Um, is this a bad game? Is this a good game? Uh, somewhere in between. I really was a little... Uh, I felt a little cold about this game. I didn't see anything terribly wrong. I didn't feel that the design was broke. It just failed to really capture my interest because it feels like a pretty simple um, light filler, that's the kind of composite you have, but it lasts longer than a regular filler, it's not like a 10 minute endeavor. Um, but the thinking that is involved is still pretty basic. So as for me, if I'm at a game night, I don't think that this would be the kind of filler or short, medium length game that I would feel like playing. I would say like, hey everybody, let's try this one, it's like, wow, awesome. Um, one use that I can see for this game is as a, as a um, spouse game, to play with your spouse game. This is the kind of game that my wife, who's not a gamer, could play, could enjoy playing. Um, she prefers games that are not too confrontational, but here there are a few effects that really target the opponent, like in your face type of effect. You win by scoring 60 points when the opponent scores 48 kind of thing. So it's more like both players are running the same race, so when a player scores very often the other player also gets to score something. So you have that advantage. If you are playing with non-gamers uh, then you can sell this game quite easily because the busy mechanics will be known to the other player. It's just that there are games that aren't based on traditional card mechanics that do a much better job of being thematic. Uh, I just so happened to have uh, Cold War CIA versus KGB here, which is based on, on Blackjack pretty much, and yet it has more nuances that do give you a feeling of, of espionage. You have to make some decisions to be devious, there's a secret selection of actions involved, uh, which makes it much more thematic. That is to say, there is not impossible to get a traditional card game and tailor it to a, to a theme, and maybe this has been done wonderfully in other games in the Mr. Rummy series. This one, not so much. It can compare it to other games in the system, but I have to say it felt like a game where you match cards and you form sets and from time to time you score them. Not much else was added. 
was added. Not terrible, not particularly interesting. I would not play with uh, anybody unless it is somebody who is familiar with traditional games, who is not a gamer at all. And maybe this could be a good option as, as a family game. I don't know, like during the holidays, the relatives are visiting, you want to play something different from traditional Rummy. Other than this, this is not a game that is going to have much use in my collection personally, and not a game that probably is going to see much timetable. I mean, table time.